Hey everybody, welcome to Johnny Nomad Presents, and today we present Lady Lady J Bookums. Lady J Bookums, that's me all day, baby. <laughs> and you can find our IG when to get all that information for you guys in the show notes and stuff like that. But like I was saying, like um for the intro, um you're spitting so much knowledge right now. Like, where did that come from? Where, give me some backstory. How did you get there? So basically, I've been working with indie artists since about like 2012. So, you know, my background starting out, uh, I've been around the music industry for a long time. Uh, Growing up, I had my own studio in Pennsylvania. I'm from Maryland, but I moved to Pennsylvania when I was in like high school and met up with a group of people. So we had our own studio. I ended up moving to Atlanta to go to school for audio engineering. That's where I live at now. I live in Atlanta. Yeah, okay. Big up. So while I was there uh, going to school, I actually started interning for a recording studio called Hot Beats Recording Studio. Okay. Um, so I was I started interning there probably like around like three months of me being in school. And then I actually got kicked out of school. So because um, I couldn't get no more loans, you know, so I had a decision right. to make like, dang, am I going to go back home or I'm going to stay here and just figure it out? So I ended up staying in Atlanta and I, I kept my internship at Hot Beat Studio. So um, that kind of like started me really uh, learning a lot more as far as the business and the entertainment side goes, because uh, I was really surrounded by major artists and major labels and things right. like that. Nature. So, you know, that was like my first time seeing all, you know, the people that we listen to on the radio, I was meeting all these people, it was like, had me open, but uh, that's why I learned a lot, I learned a lot about engineering and um, creating music, because I write music as well, um, so record and all of that good stuff, and I was there for about like four years before I stopped working there, once I stopped working there, I started to do stuff with indie artists, so I started putting on my own showcases um, in Atlanta, so I was like, you know, out everywhere, just trying to find every indie artist. And that's where it just all started. 2012, I just started working with the indie artists doing showcases. And then from there, I've just been growing. I've had a promotion company where I ran online promo for indie artists. Um, And it kind of brought me to this place now after learning all of these different things. You know, I kind of sat back and I was like, you know what? I got to get back. I fell off of my social media for a while. You know, I wasn't promoting. I wasn't doing anything. I actually had um, moved to Texas from Atlanta. And um, after me being here in Texas for a few months, my my brother passed away. So mm. I kind of stopped doing everything. I stopped sure. writing music. I stopped doing my promotion. And I had a lot of artists that had been contacting me like, yo, where you at? What you doing? Because I didn't really put that information out to the world. So I was like, you know what? I got to get back to what I love, what I do. So I just totally like revamped it, my Instagram. And I just start putting out information. I dropped like one video and it wasn't even too do all these videos it was just like let me just speak on something real quick and once i did that first video i got like so much engagement and so much interaction with it i was like oh okay this <laughs> might be my thing right right so that's kind of how it started i guess with the whole instagram you know dropping videos and advice and stuff like that so as you do this like what made you really go into the niche and say, you know what i'm gonna start spin knowledge and start helping people because you from promoting to giving people information is different. Right. And a lot of times in the industry, they cover that information. They hold it tight to their chest yeah, and they don't share it. Right. Which is fucked up. Right. right? Well, so I, like, I kind of feel like, you know, to get, you got to give. Right. So absolutely. when I got to the point of me feeling like, okay, I'm going to get back on my social media. It has to be for a purpose. You know, I'm not just sharing my life. It has to be for a purpose. So my purpose was that I was starting to create, um, courses for artists to be able to take to just teach them all kinds of different stuff, how to jump start their music career, how to grow their following. I knew I wanted to get this information out, but it's like, who am I to just drop a course and who, you know, and people just start looking at me. So it's like, for me, I felt like, yo, I have to give something. So sure. you starting that advice, you know, that got people's eyes on me. That brought me a lot of new followers that gave people a purpose to feel like, yo, she kind of knows what she's talking about. So right. 
yeah, maybe let me check out this course that she says she, that she has or that she does. Whatever. You know, when you start doing stuff, people start looking at you. They start checking you out on other yes. things. Right? Yes. Yes. So absolutely. Started to, um, that's why I was like, you know what? I'm going to just keep dropping this knowledge because I had I did have people reach out to me like, yo, you're giving too much game away. And you telling too many secrets and the game's supposed to be sold, not told and all this different stuff, you know. Yeah. But. I'm like, man, whatever, because people was buying my courses. So at the end of the day, it's working for me, you know? Exactly. So I don't know. That's that's kind of how that started. No, I, I totally agree with you. you. You hit a lot of cool points, especially, like I said, like, you know, people want to hold it to a secret for some reason. And if you really look at all the great entrepreneurs, they've given their product away for free in the beginning. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And you have to do that. Honestly, the way I grew up, my first entrepreneur in Brooklyn was a drug dealer. The way they got you hooked, they gave you that crack. They gave you that coke for free. And then you came back. They were like, oh, you want more? Well, exactly. it's a price with that. And, and so thing, my mentor told me, he said, you know, because uh, like you said, a lot of mentors or a lot of people who are successful do give a lot of stuff away for free. But he said, like, we can all tell people how to do something and they still won't do it. I can tell oh, you no. exactly what I do. Right. They still won't do it. They need to. They, you need to have a step. They need the step by step. Like I need to see it. I don't need you to just tell me. I need to see it. And that's why I can drop all this information, and people still act like they don't know what they do, they're doing until yeah. they go and buy my product, where it's exactly. giving them like the outline, the blueprint, right? Absolutely. So that's why I don't never trip. Like you know what, I'm gonna get this information because it's just gonna come back to me tenfold at the end of the day. No, absolutely. I think and and like I wrote, I wrote two books last year. Uh -huh. and when I wrote the books, I wrote one called Purpose. And the second one is more like an essay called Inside Out and about mindset and how you got to keep your mindset before you start working out. You know, people want to just work out crazy and stuff like that. But they never work on their mindset. They want to work on their body. They're still fucked up in the head. Right. Right. And the same thing goes for your career, whether it was in music or not. Like, you got to make sure all your ducks are in a row. And if you're going to make music, is it a hobby for you or is it truly going to be something you're going to go after? Right. So, because I had a number of, of so far underground artists on my podcast, and that's kind of how I started the podcast out. We're having some underground artists that I liked. I made sure they had an EP out first. So I would say, well, let me see what you got out there first. Right. You know, does it sound good? Let me put you on. Are you different? Are you unique? And I could fuck with you. Right. And, and if it is, then I'll put you on the platform. Because this is a, this is, that's why I call it Giant Nomad Presents. It's a platform for the people, it's a podcast for the people. And it's to speak to interesting people like yourself. Right. So, with all that being said, when you have these folks really getting started and unclear about their path, and then they want to kind of try to just fast forward everything. They buy the rapper's kit. We all know that, right? The jewels, the tats, they try to front with the cars or whatever, instead of just focusing on the actual music itself. Right. You know, so what advice can you give to some hip hop artists out there who are just starting out, who are unsure, like, what kind of advice can you give them as far as their sound, the musicality, and really to check themselves to see if they're actually fucking good or not? I think, like, with, with every artist, what people need to understand is that, you know, this is business. So, like, whatever you do, even if you if you want to be a doctor, if you want to be an electrician, whatever you want to be, you have to learn how to be it, right? And one thing that you just said is, like, people just want to get on and just start doing stuff. But I don't know why in music, Artists feel like they don't have to learn how to be an artist. They just start doing what they see people doing, which is recording, you know, doing right. these little performance, dropping these little, you know, BS videos and all of that stuff. But they don't take no time to really learn the business, you know. Right. And for me, I feel like that is another reason why I put so much information out, because it's like, yo, I want my indie artist to win. But some stuff is common sense. Like you have to know that you got to put work in. You got to you got to study. You got to go and find answers. You can't wait for people to tell you or you're going to have to buy it. You're either going to find it or you're going to buy it regardless. But you got to invest that into yourself to become a great artist, especially right. an indie artist, because we get getting to the point where it's like we don't really need labels too much. I mean, you know, labels is dying out. All of that is way more people that's making it in the indie field. Right. So it's possible for every indie artist. And at the end of the day, you know, even the best of rappers didn't start out the best of rappers when it comes to lyrical. You know, that's something that you got to practice. You got to practice writing. You got to practice, you know, writing hook, writing lyrics, rewriting. You got to practice those things. You got to practice your performance, you know, your cadence, how, practice 
even finding your own voice, your own stuff, all of that stuff got to be practiced. It's just not going to come to you. I feel like the only people really born with gifts are singers. You know what I mean? Yeah. Singers born with a natural gift to sing. But rappers, it's like you have to develop yourself. Because a singer could sing all day, but they might not can write. Right. right? So then that's something that they can work on. But rappers, it's like you, you can really develop yourself as a rapper with your lyrical skills and stuff like that. But knowledge is, is like A1. It's just like the most important thing. We can all have talent, but you see it every day. Everybody is getting like janked around because they don't have no knowledge of when it comes to this business or what they should be doing, what they should expect. You know, even Blueface, I saw an interview with him and they was asking him who he signed to. And he like, all I know I'm signed to, you know, 100. And they like, yeah, well, that's what, you know, cash money does. And he's like, man, I don't know. You got to act. He don't even know who, you know, who yeah. he's there. And yet, you to your point, you have to know that. Like, the days of just being an artist are over. Like, you have yeah. to be an artist slash entrepreneur and run your shit right. Because no doubt, being indie, you have a lot of control. You control your masters. You have all that control of yours, right? Right. But then what do you do with your masters? So yeah, you may have control of it, but how you manipulate to make money off it, that means by selling it to commercials. That means you're getting a full, you know, if it be used for jingles and shit, and you're getting a full cut from it, right? That's just one avenue. Um, so having a proper budget for marketing, and that's right. what people don't do well as either as indie, right? They're like, oh, I'm just going to put something out there. It's going to go viral. To go viral is very fucking hard. And, right. it, and you can't plan to go viral. Right. Like, it has to be something in the matrix that clicks and everybody fucking goes to it. It's stuff that works hand in hand to get you to those levels. And a lot of people don't see it. You know, I don't know if you saw the video I just dropped the other day. And it was basically saying, like, talking about, like, a four-month challenge. Like, take four months. Yeah, yeah I see that. Up, Right? So I bro basically broke down, like, you know, month one, that's your planning phase where you're just planning everything. What is the concept of the song? You know, what DJs need it, what blogs need it, what's your budget going to be, where's it going to be streaming, where you drop, all of that stuff, right? Second month is for you creating, you know, actually writing and recording, getting your video shot, your photo shoot, cover art, all this, all your content, creating all the content that you need to get the month three. We're actually pre-promoting. So you're dropping little promotions to hype up the track. And then by month four, you're, you're just dropping the track, you're dropping everything, you're performing. So I had somebody hit you know, hit me on Instagram and was like, but, you know, that's not just as simple as that. You know, how do you even reach out to DJs? How do you even get them to spin? How you, and I'm like, listen, I can't give you all the game in no. seconds. Like, you, this, is, this is for you to take and go learn it. Go figure it out. Go network. Like, people just, these artists, they just want you to just, like, hold their hand and walk them to the finish line. They don't want to put in no work. Listen, when I tell you that, with this podcast, I started with me talking to my fucking self, okay? Right. Before I had before I had weekly guests. Right. And then I had to figure out, how do I get a guest on, right? And I said, you know what? I'm going to start DMing people. The worst thing they can say is no, or they can ignore my DM. And that means, okay, cool. I respect it. Let me keep it going, though. Right. There's too many people on IG that someone's going to say yes, because people like to talk about themselves. So I'm like, <laughs> you know, so I'm like, no. I was like, what, I'm, what do I have to lose? Exactly. And I did that. And when I and then when I hit people up, it wasn't some business joint. Hey, love your content. I would love for you to be a guest. This is what I do. I think we're a good fit together. Boom. The same way how I hit you up. Right. I was like, I was like, yo, what up? Boom, boom, boom. Do you want to do it? Like, does this do this? Check me out first. See, if, you know, if I fit your vibe. Right. If we do, let's make it happen. Right. And that's what you have to do with the DJs. You got to go to the clubs. You have to network and make friends. You know what I'm saying? You got to say, oh, what's up? Are you going to be this club? I'm going to be there. I'm going to promote you as well. It's going to be a combo. It's going to be a collab. And people have to remember, DJs were the first and foremost in hip-hop in the beginning before rappers really took the reign. Right. So the DJs are always still needed in the clubs. The DJs still needed to promote you know, your, your music. Right. Um, and to do gigs... It's great to do gigs, but again, are you learning from it? What are you gaining from it? You know, how how are you marketing it? Or do you have your people there recording you, putting it on IG, putting it on Snapchat, or whatever, you, whatever format you want to use? These are all things you got to get people involved to have a true like center. Right. You don't need you only forty people from the hood with you. You need a good small core that's really going to back you up and say, yo, I got your back. Well, you're up there. I'm going to record it so then we can post it, boom, live. You know what I'm saying? Those are things people have to really look at. You know, right. And to build a following, 
You have to be engaging. You can't just have one um, followers and not be engaging back with your followers, with right. your audience. You know, I, I mean, I'm sure you follow me. So, you know, I talk about that all the time uh, with these artists, you know, for those who are really trying to build organic following and make or organic um, relationships. You have to be engaged with people. You have to put yourself out there. You have to talk to people. You know what I mean? Like you have to be entertaining yourself. It has to be a reason why people need to follow you. You know, we're, we're not just regular. And I tell artists this all the time. If you want to be regular, then have your personal page. But if you want to say yeah. that you're an artist, you need to have, you need to look at yourself as a business and you have to figure out what's going to make people want to follow you over the other artists. Correct. So most people content is trash. Their content Online is trash. Social media is trash. A lot of artists' music is trash in general. And that's where it really starts with not, you know, with people not wanting to deal with you, not wanting to spin your records, not wanting to play your music, not wanting to follow you. And that's because a lot of the music is trash. Everybody wants to be an artist now. It's, it's literally like oversaturated with the wackest artists that we've ever had in years because it's much easier for people to try to make music these days sure. than it was years ago. Right. So now we have all these people that's just like, oh, this is what I want to do because it looks cool, because they think it's like a fast lane to to be famous or to get money or whatever. You know, it's more of a trend now. Like music years ago used to really be about the passion, about survival, about, you know, political stuff, about purpose. Right. And there's not really a purpose to it. It's just something that people want to do because it looks trendy. And that's why. You know, our music is where it's at. That's why I feel like our music is where it's at right now. That's why people feel like, uh, you know, they're entitled to this or I don't want to pay the DJs. I don't want to do this. I, I just want to get on. Like, they don't understand how how hard it was for artists years ago to really put in work and they make those connections to, to really get on. And I think that's where the disconnect is at. It really is. Um, you hit a lot of points right there. I think what people have to learn from that is that the work itself, a lot of times, is not enough. The, the the networking is, and people have to understand, there's different between kissing ass and networking. Right. That. And and people always, oh, you kissing you kissing Zaz or kissing her ass. No, I'm networking, bro. Like, if I give them something, they're gonna want something in return. It's the bartering system. Right. That's how shit gets done. We not be, may not be friends now, but we're gonna be associates and work together because we're not gonna be allies. There's a valid interest for both of us. Right. And maybe a friendship will form down the line and we can really make business and build together in the future even more. Exactly. Right? But every person that I interact with, I'm looking at it as a very finite time I have with that person to say, yo, I need to I need to build with this person really quick because they have something I want that I can't have. And that's what you're right. I think too, like hip hop forty years now, right? Um, it's evolving and it's kind of becoming categorized now. Yeah. Just the way rock and roll happened with rock and roll, right? You had your grunge, your punk rock, your hard rock, your Christian rock. And now you, hip-hop has gone to those different branches. Right. So you want to do mumble rapping, there's a lane for that. If you want, want to be lyrical, there's a lane for that. You know what I'm saying? If you want to be kind of a popish, you know, rapper, there's a right. lane for that now too, right? Right. So hip-hop has evolved, and now people are selective, and they can really say, hey, I want to fuck with this sound. I like this sound sonically, right? Or people are going to say, hey, I, I hate mumble rap, screw it. But at the end of the day, there's a sound for everybody, right? Yeah. But to your point, though, because it's so easy now to just open your computer, download an app, buy a cheap mic, and get on, it's it's really fucking easy as fuck. And anybody can jump on Spotify or whatever, right? right. So you do that, you put it up there, and, it, and like you said, it is trash. You know, how, how do people understand, even SoundCloud, right? SoundCloud is really huge, really, I think, really the indie part of it. Um, how to really maneuver and pass that? Because I think the, the true artists have to understand that's just a small hurdle to get past those low-lying fruit that's saying, hey, I'm an artist too, but they're really not. They're just, like you said, they're just right. trying to get on to be famous. And there's a lot of money in the indie world. You know what I'm saying? That's what people understand. Like, And you have more control. But again, your your business hat has to be on. You have to make connections in the industry. You have to make connections in every city that you want to tour in, and know the the players in every city. Can you speak about that? Like, how it's important to really respect the next city you go into to go into and know the proper people in there. Well, you know that I think it's definitely important. You know, one thing that people got to learn how to do is do their research. You know, when you're an artist and you figure out like 
you know, what your sound is, what your genre is, the best thing for you to do is start looking for people who are looking for that sound. So if you're going to another city and you know, like, boom, they got a, they got a lounge over here that be playing artists that are similar to me, then you need to start going out. You need to start going to the spot, popping up, shaking hands with artists that's already performing, you know, getting familiar with the promoters, buy them a drink, buy the DJ a drink, follow them on, on social media. You got to start like getting in their face to where they start to know you. You know what I mean? So it's like now they're expecting to see you. Right. And then you start talking about what you do. See, a lot of people come. It's like if I come to a club and I just start telling promoter like, oh, you need to book me. I do ABCDE. He's going to look at me crazy. Right. Like like, first of all, it's probably a thousand artists that say the same thing to him. Right. First of all. Second of all, you ain't put no real time into him. You didn't really invest into his venture for him to want to put you on to anything. You know what I mean? So it's like it goes back to what we were talking about with building those relationships. You got to start to build relationships with people in different places. You got to figure out how you can plug yourself in. That's where everything you do, wherever you go, if you're a business person, you sell any type of product, you have to figure out how you can plug your product into the matrix, right? So it's like, you just got to start getting out there. You got to, I tell people, and this was a part of the planning phase when you're trying to be an artist or a business entrepreneur, whatever, you always have to plan what you're doing and who your product is for and where would it go? Absolutely. Who would rock with it? Right. So if you're an artist and you're trying to be like, boom, okay, I got, I got this single that either I recorded it or I haven't recorded, I'm going to record it, but let me find out all the places that play this kind of music, whether it's in my city two cities over, whatever. Let me find artists that are similar to me and see where they're performing. Let me see where they're going because if their music is similar to mine, then I can go where they go. I can start making a connection with them, which, you know, now I could be a part of their little group. Every time they go and perform, I could be with them. And then they're going to start doing the same thing for me. You just, it's strategic. You know, you might not even like the artist, but I see you moving. You moving and shaking, so I need to be a part of what you got going on. See, artists don't be thinking about like, um, moves. They don't really think about moves. They just like, oh, I just need to perform. Oh, I need to go here. You know what I mean? They don't think like, oh, we build a relationship. If you look at even hip hop, the reason why I so so much of a disconnect with females and hip hop is because they don't understand. All the men, they all collab. They all featuring each other. They be on the same album. Soon as Drake drop, Travis Porter is on there. When Travis drop, Drake is on there. Like they understand how they they further themselves by doing that but females in the music industry you know they don't do that it's like a beef because they constantly trying to compete because everybody wants to be the best when it comes to females but males they don't care about that like oh you the king i'm the king we all king we all gonna do this collab and we all gonna get this money regardless if we hang together regardless if we talk about the same thing it don't even matter so it's like you got to start getting strategic about what you're doing and just get rid of all the rest of that stuff how can you move around? How can you build these relationships? How can you make these connections to get to where you need to go? And that's period. But it comes with starting to plan that out, writing down a list of anybody and everybody who may be interested in your type of music. Absolutely. I think with women artists, it's harder because of the fact that men could get away with wearing a t-shirt and jeans and Tim's and it fitted. And with women, you got to have a whole glam team. And your outfits have to change all the time. That's that was that was the past. Right. right. Now you still see that though. You still see the Cardi B's, Nicki Minaj of the world where they have these big displays and stuff. Right. And you know, a lot of a lot of music companies back in the day shied away from a lot of women because of that. They like, that's the extra budget we need to incorporate into that. Right. Because right? they're not gonna wear the same outfit twice. But you know, you know what I'm saying? What? I think like one thing that, you know, we as people we always think like that. You know, I feel like we're, we're, and we're in a different time where at the end of the day, no matter what you do, people going to do what you require them to do. Right. When I first started doing my videos, I felt like, man, I gotta be, I gotta put some makeup on. I gotta do, you know what I mean? But then I was just like, man, I don't have time for that. Like I'm an everyday person. Like you're an everyday person. So I started just to come on. I throw a hat on. I throw the weave back. You know what I mean? Throw some, like <laughs> I don't, it don't matter what it is. You know what I mean? I just started coming out as myself and I was like, let me see how people take this. Right. Cause I was thinking like, Oh, maybe I always got to look a certain way, but you know, people was taking me regardless. It don't matter if I got wigs on, if I got my lock, it don't matter what it is. People going to take me. So I think if, if females or if people get bold enough to just really start being themselves, 
people will take it because the content is good. You know what I mean? That's why it's so great to be an indie artist right now because we don't even care if the content is good. You can really spit they're going to be on. You can build your own fan base. I don't need to, you know, I haven't paid anybody to do any promotion for me or none of that. I just started building my own fan base, you know, tapping into the people who I know uh, is my target. And I think that's what people need to do. Stop trying to target everybody else's following and stop trying to be, don't try to be Nicki Minaj. Don't try to be a Cardi B. You just need, who are you? You know what I mean? And and really, everybody loves somebody that's different. Yeah. That's, how, that's what started the whole wave of people sounding like Drake, because Drake came out sounding different. And now we got a whole wave of Drake. That's what right. started, you know, we got all of this mumble rap, you know, Migos start doing all this different stuff. Like, that's what everybody really loves, something new. They might complain about it in the beginning, but then it starts to become the norm. And right. everybody's on it, right? Right. So people just got to understand, like, man, if you just start being you, I'm telling you, it, it'll change your life because we got too many artists that want to come out and be everybody else. Then they end up like six, nine. You in jail because you came out wanting to be a, a gangster. But now you don't want to be a gangster no more. We got the yeah. little bodies and all of them. You know, they wasn't they didn't come from no hood. They wouldn't come from dealing with females and all that. But they have this persona now because that's that's what they feel like is going to sell. Right. So. And that's what you know. And hip hop, the biggest problem I always have with hip hop is one. I think there's too many features. When I want to listen to an album, I want to listen to the artists. Right. Especially when I go to a concert, I want to hear the entire song, not just one verse of the song, because right. you don't have you don't have the feature artists there, right? So I think compared to other genres of music, I think hip hop is too feature heavy. Like to me, a collab should be special. It should right. make sense. The music has to be badass. Like when Method Man and Mary got together, that was a badass combo. Right. That made that made sense. You know what I'm saying? But then when you have 13 songs and 10 features, I got a problem with that. Yeah. I and, had a that said, you know, he felt like he we spoke about that and he said, you know, artists are not comfortable with themselves no more. You know? Yeah. So it's like you're not going to get uh, J. Cole that don't like to feature nobody. You know what I'm saying? You're not yeah. going to get that a lot because a lot of people are not comfortable with themselves uh, on a track for a whole track. Like, a lot of people can't even write that good. A lot of your favorite artists have writers, you know? So it's like, if I only got to work by writing one verse, I could throw somebody else on there, throw a hook on there, like, boom, the song is done. That's going to help me sell because this person is on it. Like a lot of people, a lot of artists these days think like that. You know what I mean? That's 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 just where we at with it. It takes a lot to come up with two verses in a bridge or two verses in a breakdown or you know what I mean? Like it, it takes a lot and a lot of people it's like A D D. They don't want to spend a lot of time, they just wanna crank it out. So and this is the thing, right? I think also for hip hop, because we always for hip hop especially when I grew up in the nineties and the golden era was about always chasing the bag. Right. But they never chase the perfection of the music. The yeah, growth the have- growth of the music. You know, because you need to, though, because if you want to bag, then you need to perfect your sound. Like you said earlier, you got to get to know your craft, got to know the business, so that way you can secure a bigger bag. If you're just trying to chase some little bullshit club money, you can do that if you want to, and you might be successful at it, but you're not going to grow from it. Yeah. I just think we're, you know, we are lazy these days when it comes to being an entertainer, and it's just because it's not a lot required out of our artists anymore, you know? You're not required to, you know, look the best anymore. If you think about artists back in the day, especially the males, like they were all real sexy. Today, you these, these people look like gremlins. They just look like whatever, <laughs> whatever, right? Females now, when it comes to a female, it's like they it's still you. Females still got to be attractive, but we got a lot of people who rap sing. You know, I, I call yeah. it rap and B. You know, we used to have R and B rhythm. Yeah. I call it rap and B. You know, rap and blues now it's when you listen to Pandora and you click on R and B, you get Migos, you getting all these people, you getting everything that's not a true singer. You know what I mean? So it's like the standards um, are different. You know, the qualifications are different. Your talent is different. You don't really have to be able to really sing or even rap. You just have to look like somebody. You have to just be able to sell. Right. And a lot of people have that look. They can sell whether they're, you know, that's why we have all the Instagram girls, all the Insta models. Everybody's a rapper now. Every female. We got way more female rappers right now than we had in a very long time. Yeah. And 
most of them are trash. A lot of them talk about, you know, getting money, selling pussy, whatever. Yeah. You know, that's like the thing right now. So that's we're gonna get a whole wave of that because now that's yeah. what's selling. All the you know, the strippers are are selling the music. It's like that's the wave. And coming up when you're growing up seeing this, you're gonna emulate that and then you'll be like, Well, I wanna do that too. I wanna be a stripper, I wanna drop this music, I wanna be, you know, getting money, I wanna drop this music. Like that's what people do. They just yeah. what they see and they and they put it back out. Do you feel, you know, that hip hop no because I think I guess in my age group, from the golden era, a lot of people just started saying, "Now nah, this this particular new age group of rappers sucks, right? They didn't give it a chance." Mm -hmm. And our parents did the same thing to us when rap came out. Say, "What kind of music is that?" You know. And then now we're kind of accepting it slightly. You see, not our older heads. Yeah, this is this is not bad. You know, even you know, there's like the Snoop Dogs or Jay Zs are, are kind of you know hitting people off or whatever. Saying like this, they're, they're, he's they're official or whatever. All right. Um. And now you're seeing like a person like a Jay-Z or Snoop who are prolonged in the game for many years, which in the past, man, you maybe was able to do five albums. And then if you hit 40, you were done. Right. And you couldn't tell your age in hip hop back in the days because it was like, that's taboo. And now it's like, it's kind of so freeing that you see him. He's like, what, 13 albums deep, 14 albums deep. And he's still revelant. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's a young heads. And um, to old heads, he's, I'm still going to his concerts. I, you know, I, I grew up for a block away from Jay Z in Brooklyn and in Tom, Tonka's projects. He was in Marcy projects, mm -hmm. so like, like I saw him in DMX freaking battle in the street when I was growing up. You know what I'm saying? So it was like to see that as bananas is crazy. But then you don't see that kind of hip hop culture, and then we have what culture vultures, right? And I'm not even sure if people understand what a culture vulture is, right? Because at the same time, too, you have minorities that go into other genres of music. They're not trying to steal the culture, but they become part of that culture. Right. You know, you go to school, right? You're in high school. You have your, what, your golf people, right? And they're dressed a certain type of way. You have your hip-hop heads. They're dressed a certain type of way. You have your cheating the squads and your jocks. They're dressed a certain type of way, and they're all kind of these little cliques, right? Right. And if you tend, as a human, gravitate to one of, one of those, mm. are you trying to steal from that? You know what I'm saying? So with hip hop, no doubt it started in the Bronx and it was actually, you know, a black and a Puerto Rican doing it. You know what I'm saying? That started that shit out. And how is, I, I don't understand how someone can steal something that actually was made to be freeing for the people. Right. That makes sense? You know what I'm saying? Or am I just talking yeah. bullshit? No, no, no. I feel it. Um, because I, I see a lot of people say that, you know, people were saying that about like Bruno Mars, like, oh, he's still in the culture. And, it, you know what I mean? But I'm just like, I don't really. I don't really think that's a thing. Now, when it comes to like rapping, of course, you know, we're used, you know, people are afraid of what they're not used to. So we are used to seeing our minorities be the rappers. So when we start getting these little sprinkles of like white boys rapping or white girls rapping. See, but white, white boys always been there. You had, you know, um, freaking back in the day, you had, uh, I can't remember, I just had a, uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it wasn't a lot. And, and to our culture, it was like, boom, it's, it's, it has to be something about you that we accept. You know what I mean? You got to do, you got to be a certain way for our culture to accept you. And then we accept this one person. But for us, everybody else, like Iggy Azalea, you know, people hate on her so much and they like, oh, she's still in the culture. She not even from here. You know what I mean? But it's just like, man, music is the one thing that is worldly. Right. You know I mean? it, it don't matter what culture, you're, every culture, every race, religion, everybody got a music, everybody got a beat, a, a, some type of rhythm, some type of whatever. So I don't really think of it like that. Like, I feel like if you dope, I don't really care what you're doing. Now I might exactly. care what you're saying. It might, right. yeah, you might, <laughs> you gotta watch what you say sometimes. But as far as like other cultures coming into what we know as, you know, a cultural thing when it comes to our music, I don't really have a problem with it. If it's dope, it's dope. Just cause it's like, it's country songs that I love. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Right. It's, it's rock songs that I love. So it's just yeah. like, you know, we should feel we should feel like, man, if you got the talent, do it. Everybody's music right now got a got a taste, a sample, or something of all these old songs, regardless if it was from Absolutely. a R and B song, hip hop song, rock song, every almost every song that you hear on the radio right now is is sampled from an old song. It, they ain't even trying to change the lyrics no more. They straight out using 
the beat, the lyrics, and everything. Yeah. You know, so it's just like we can all say that about each other. But at the end of the day, music is the one thing that is that is worldly, in my opinion. So if you have the talent to get it done, I just say get it done. Period. No, I agree with that. I you know. Um, I totally agree with that. I, I never really understood that that concept of of, the, of having a, of being a culture vulture and and stealing something that belongs to the people anyway. You know, and this is a way of expression because right now hip hop has surpassed in record sales rock and roll now. Yeah. You know, so this it's the number one music genre in America and around the world. You know, so we got people in Germany rapping, in France rapping, England, you know, it always been rapping, but never really gravitated to them for some reason. All right. And we tend to really have a stronghold in America of rapping. But then you have all these other artists around the world coming through. Once we was once we open our doors to that, man. Right, I, it's going to be insane. Right, it's, it's not their fault that they 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 jump on. I mean, you know, our favorite rappers they going over to their countries touring. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's not their fault that we we sending our music over there. So what what are they supposed to do with it? Yeah, you, m- music and merch, right? So right, yeah. And what do we expect from that? Not for them to, to grow up with the culture. So if 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 you were like DMX back in the day, and and most of your audience were white white kids from suburbia, and now they're they're growing up in a career and they're teaching their kids about DMX and, and Ice Cube and NWA. Then what's wrong with that? They grew up with that. That was just the music of choice. Right. right? So exactly. nobody fucks with Eminem. <laughs> right. No one fucks with Eminem. Right. That's yeah. just like taboo. You fuck with him. They already know he's going to chop you up. And he's a what? He's a white boy. And, and the black people love him. So it's like, yeah, we pick and choose, you know, we do. We we hypocritical a lot of time or min- minorities like we pick and choose who we allow to come to the cookout, but you know it is what it is. Like I didn't my- even know when I first heard Post Malone, I didn't know he was black. I mean white. I know he was white. Post Malone. Yeah, I I mean I didn't know he. I definitely didn't know he was white. Uh, I didn't think he was all the way black. I thought he was probably like a mixed thing. But when I seen him, I'm like, yo, look at this guy. But when I really seen what he can do, like his talent. He's talented. Like I can't front. Like some people be playing, trying to play him, but I gotta say, like I'm, I'm an avid listener to his music, and he's, he's, is, he is lyrical. If you were to kind of just take away sonically the whole auto tune bullshit, um, and you listen to his content, he, he is lyrical. He is saying something, right? You know, and then that's what you have to really take away from his music. I love Logic as well. Yeah, like, I like Logic. I think Logic is dope. Like he just has a sign, and, and to your point about being yourself, Logic is probably one of the, and probably Post Malone. They're, they're really being themselves. Like right. Logic got these glasses on. He looks kind of nerdy, but when he spits, he's spitting fire. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Post Malone got. Oh, he has the the new rapper's kit with the tattoo on the faces, but he's not trying to be gangster. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He just has that certain look. You know, it wasn't like Takashi. Takashi like had that whole rainbow hair. He really wanted to be, you know gangster with it you know but obviously that failed him and now he's going to witness protection pro you know witness prison program where he had to get his tattoos removed and haircut so <laughs> right <laughs> he gotta go back to whatever his real name was so exactly i think his name was daniel hernandez or something like that right. so but um but again, yeah, you know i feel like like man we we have to just look more at the talent and stop looking at you know what who the talent is coming from you know what i'm saying like right. just judge people by their talent you know and, and let's like unify people when it comes to music because music is a culture in itself. You know, it's not a black, white, Puerto Rican, Mexican thing. It just, it's just a culture in itself. And it's just multi levels when it comes to music. And that's the great thing about it. No, it is. And like I said, like, you know, if, if, if you gravitate to one thing, if even with this come down to sports, like you're going to just learn and, and be knowledgeable of that thing. Hip hop, especially rap is, is funny because it's, it's it's a combination of, of competition and sport with yeah. music. No other genre is like that. You know what I'm saying? You don't see rock and roll heads making songs with beef on it. You know what I'm saying? You don't see pop artists doing that shit either. You know what I'm saying? Hip hop's the only one that it's like, yo, it's, it's gutter. And like, you diss me, I'm going to diss you back. And then we have top whatever, top five, top ten. Like We make all these Hall of Fame type of uh, ratings. Right. No other genre does that. You know what I'm saying? It's like, if you love Led Zeppelin, you can love fucking uh, Metallica and Guns N' Roses too. But then if you start talking about Biggie and Pac, who's better, forget about it. It's over. That's a fight right. waiting to happen. 
That's a, that's really a true shootout waiting to happen in Brooklyn. You know what I'm saying? So, but I think that's what to your point. Why not just like what the fuck you like? You know what I'm saying? And just enjoy no, the music. Think, I think we get in there though, because I mean, like even what you said, how you know the music is different. We did have a lot of old heads that was kind of hating on the music now, but it, I think that happens with every generation. Yep. You know, um, but at some times it's like you you respect it because at the end of the day, it's like. People got to feed their family. So if you mumble rapping and it's working for you, I, I can't hate on that. I can say I, 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 I respect you gangster for real. I yeah, get that. I respect it just as they have to do it every generation. The thing about it is that I don't feel like the artists now, they're not going to be timeless like Jay-Z. Like you said, like Jay-Z been out for so long, but he can still come drop something now and still relate to the people old and new. And that's because he learned how to create timeless music, but he also knows how to adapt to whatever is going on right now. But like the artists now, they only making music for right now. You know, the music is not going to be in the Hall of Fame years from now. They don't have anthems no more. You know, mm-hmm. um, it's just, it's just, it's a different type of feel. And I just think it goes back to because it's just different type of requirements of what it takes to call yourself an, an artist or a performer or entertainer these days. You know? No, I agree. I, th- I think it's the same difference when back in the day when, you didn't have the indie stuff. You know, you had to go to record labels and you would never probably hear of an artist because they were shelved the artist. Because right. they, didn't, they didn't have that radio smash. And that's what I think a lot of people don't understand. Artists didn't come out back in the day unless they had a radio hit. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And if you couldn't make a true album, because there's a lot of people who could battle rap, but they can't write a song. Right. Papoose? You know? Yeah, Papoose. I, I you know love Papoose, but... but uh. No. You know what I'm saying? Like, so... That's that's part of it, and if you can't make music, then the the the, the industry is gonna say, well, yeah, we're gonna cut you, and we never get to hear from that person again. So indie, I think, is great because we don't get to lose those artists anymore, right? Or they don't get cut because now they they have that. So indie has a has a has that wave of wannabes trying to come up, but they, they I don't think that that's, that's that's too big too big of a mountain to to go over because they all tend to fall out from the so there's no difference from YouTube. A lot of people want to come out of the channel, they see how hard it is, they fall off anyway, and the channel's dead. Right. And the same thing with people who are who think they're artists, they don't try to make a song or two, come out with it, try to promote it. Hey, I got a song out, and for the next 20 years, they never come out another song again. Right. So I think the true people that do come out from it, that do really rise from that bullshit and have that new sound and have a great sound and could really make a living off of it, then you won. Plain and simple. And, and there's too many people on this planet. You don't have to be big in America. I think that's the biggest thing two people don't understand. You yeah. can be big overseas and be very successful. You're right. I mean, at the end of the day, you can be an artist that only got 50 true fans. But if every time you drop a project, you got 50 people buying it. If every time you drop a, some merch, you got 50 people buying it, like, then you're doing way more than people who supposedly got 100,000 followers but don't get no engagement. Because they're, they're not active followers, absolutely. You have it's all about your your diehard fan base. You know your real fans. Even if I if I get ten new fans uh, a month, I'm gonna be winning because that's ten people that's actually gonna spend something on me or invest into me some type of way. Whether you're downloading, streaming, buying merch, you know, liking and commenting, all of that engagement is worth something. You know, I call it my your most valuable. Payers. You have to always, everything you do, you know, I have a program, how to grow your Instagram, how to teach you how to look for your MVIs, which is your most valuable Instagrammers. Those are the people that's always constantly dropping comments, liking, they be commenting on other people commenting on your posts. Yeah. You know? They're they're engaging with your stories, everything. Those are your most valuable Instagrammers. Even if they haven't dropped a dime, they are continuously engaging with you, right? So that means that if I drop something, they're going to be the first ones to check it out, right. right? So I'm growing my fan base. Like people got to understand, like you don't need a thousand people, ten thousand people. You don't need to be famous. All you need to do is have a core fan base that, when every time you drop anything, any new song, whatever, there's people who are actually waiting and looking for it all the time. To your point with that promotion, I and mean, we touched on that a little bit earlier. Mm-hmm. When I promote a podcast. I, I take it maybe four days to promote the cast, the, the podcast, and set the episode itself. Sure. I, I, I want to build up 
some momentum to it. Mm-hmm. Why don't we do that enough with music? Why are we just dropping shit, saying, hey, it's out on SoundCloud now today, boom, get it, and then numbers don't exist the way they think they're going to hit? Well, that's because, you know, artists, most artists are not business people, so they're only going to mimic what they see. What you see from your favorite artist, you just see them drop music. You know, where do you see it dropping? Oh, they're on Spotify, so I need to be on Spotify. Oh, they're on Amazon Me, so I need, they, a lot of artists only do what they see. But the major artists, they don't show you the business side of what they're doing. Right. That's why artists don't even think about it. You know, I'm when I talk about, you know, you got to be signed to a pro. I get a lot of people that say, what's a pro? And I'm just like, you, <laughs> there's a disconnect here. You can't even get paid for no royalties if you're not signed up with a pro, if you're not signed up with Sound Exchange and all these different platforms that you need to be signed up with to make sure that you are getting your royalties. You don't even know nothing about that. That's like SoundScan back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, you know, it's it's like, it's a hard thing if you're young and you're looking up to someone saying, hey, I want to do this, but they never show you another side of what they do. You, It's like out of sight, out of mind. And that's why a lot of artists don't do those, the business type of things until they get in the industry. That's when they realize like, oh, I got to go through artist development. I need a manager. I need to be doing this. That's when you see people blossom. But that's the only thing that we see as, you know, the fans, if you want to call it that. We don't see nothing else. So that's yeah. why artists, they don't think about that that stuff but it's like if you want to be independent or whatever even if you want to be signed you're going to have to think about this if you just make one google if you just google google will drop so much information on you youtube will drop so much information on you like there's really no excuse anymore for you not to know or you not to learn or whatever because it's so much free information if you just take the time to look it up and they don't they just and they don't. And nobody has patience anymore Exactly. Everybody just, wants to have fast food kind of music. Yeah. Right. But those are the same the same artists that just keep dropping are the same artists that be having like five plays on the music on sound SoundCloud. You know, it's like so at some point is it has to resonate with them like, okay, I don't really gotta follow it. And that's why I, on my Instagram I try to be very blunt, you know, to make people start to think like, what are you dropping music for? Nobody's even listening. You don't even got no fans. Yo, your best right. friends don't even share your music. You know, yeah. your mama not even showing up to your shows. Like, ain't nobody really supporting you. So what are you going to do next? Like, what else can you do? You got to start taking yourself seriously. Period. And I think, honestly, it, this is advertising is really cheap on Facebook and Instagram. And smart people, you can see their advertising. And most people don't even know about it. Right. And for myself... I'm creating a budget for my advertising future. Mm -hmm. So in the next couple of months, I'm going to have a campaign with with video and still shots that I'm going to put together and, and, and push it even further. And I, it's, but again, it has to be strategic. Like you just can't drop shit to drop shit. You got to let people know you're still around and and involved. There's only very few people that can drop one pick once a month, like a Beyonce or a Jay-Z type that is so freaking famous. People go crazy when they do drop something. Because well, anticipation. Put in that time and that work to get to that point, right? Exactly. Exactly. Where other people, they got to work so hard, you may have to drop two, three times a day or a week, whatever it is you have to look at. But I found my niche by, by doing different things. Right. You have to find, when you once you find your audience, then you learn how they want to consume you as a whole, as exactly. content, merch, whatever you want to put out there. But you can't put everything out at once because then it's going to fail, right? So when you got to build your audience, maybe merch is not there yet. Maybe right. merch is after a little while and you start asking people, or maybe you make merch for yourself to wear, start promoting your own shit. And people will say, hey, I want that hat. I want that shirt. Where can I get it from? And once you get enough requests, then you say, you know what? I think it's time for me to really make this now. Yeah. I mean, I think everything has a a process right you know i think initially it really comes down to your passion first of all a lot of people feel like they want to do music just because it's a trend they're not really passionate about it the people who are actually passionate about what they're doing you doing your podcast me doing my whatever i do like it's it's going to start here but it's going to get to a point where you're like you know what i need to grow you know, how do I grow? Like I have this podcast, but you know what? Now I want to do videos because that's me growing. What do I need to do? I need to buy a mic. You start looking into how do I start to grow, right? 
artists, a lot of artists don't start looking into how do I, how do I need to grow? What else do I need to get beyond this point? A lot of people don't look into that and that's why they're okay with just going in the studio, drop, you know, recording to beats that they didn't pay for, <laughs> dropping it on SoundCloud, a platform that they're not getting paid for, you know, and, and it's just redoing the cycle over and over and over. I know artists that got way more albums, so-called albums or projects than Jay-Z. And you, and I'm just like, well, what, what'd you get from the first one? Like, what'd you right. get from the fifth one? Did you, did you make money? Did you, like, what'd you get? Continuously, you're getting nothing. So that tells me, like, you're not really passionate about succeeding or excelling because you have not taken the time to look into what is it going to take for me to really start getting a thousand downloads this month instead of five. Correct. And that's where people are just throwing darts at the board. It's in a handful of darts, hoping something sticks. Exactly. And you can't, like you said, you have to be more strategic and really move in that space so you can win. And it's okay to have small wins. You know, yeah. you're going to have a goal and the goal is the summit, right? But it's a lot between the the, the, the bottom of the canyon to where the, the, the summit is. Right. But you have to really grind and have those steps. People need to really look at what step each step is going to take for you to get closer to that and work on those steps. It's all about the process. Right. It's, it's, it's all about making it happen. Putting, you got to get your goals in perspective. Like You have to start writing out your goals and then writing out how I'm not going to get there, what's going to take for me to get there. And you have to make your goals reachable. <laughs> you know, you, your goal just can't be, I want to be famous. Okay. Yeah. What else? Like, what do you, what do you want to accomplish before you get famous? Like, what is a goal to you? A goal for me is, you know, when I was building my Instagram, I said like, I want to have 10,000 followers. Last June is when I started to rebuild my Instagram. I deleted everything off. I started my rebranding. I had 4,185 followers. Right now I have like 19,000 followers. You know what I mean? From June. So it was like, and not even just followers, engaging followers, purchasing followers. You know what I mean? Loyal followers, people who are sharing me, reposting me every day. Like, you know, that wasn't even my goal in the beginning. I just said, hey, I want to have at least 10,000 because I want to be able to tell people to swipe up in my Insta story. Right. I hit 10,000 months ago, <laughs> you know. So it's like you got to have achievable goals. You can't just say I want to be famous. Like, what do you want before that? Because it's a whole bunch of stuff that comes in the middle of that. So um, I know you have your own courses and stuff, which is fantastic. Yeah. What made you go to that? Like, what, what was the, what was that click? You say, "Oh man, I can make money off of this." Like, what, what what took you there? Well, that definitely was one. Another one is because you know, working with indie artists for so long, it it starts to get like crazy how much they don't know or they won't go learn. And it's like you start having all these conversations, you know, with people because a lot of artists did build a relationship with me because I'm not really about the money, like. If I know, I'm going to tell you before you ask me, you know, with my shows, I used to have requirements like you got to be registered for a pro because I used to have people uh, spinning on radio stations, like online stations that were tracking um, your BDS and all of that. So I started to make requirements. So and they were like, all right, let me go sign up real quick. Like they didn't even have it. So for me, it was just like, yo, I'm tired of talking to y'all. Like I can't keep telling people individually what to do. So what can I do? to just put it out to the masses. And I started to learn like a lot of things that I learned, I pay for it. I took, I paid for a course that taught me how to create courses. I paid a thousand dollars from this course from my mentor, which taught me how to create a course, no matter what field you in, what you talking about. Right. So after I went through her course, you know, I started to put together my course. Like I can get this information out to people like at one time, instead of, working with people individually because people ask me all the time like yo do you manage and I'm like nah i ain't trying to do all of that i don't want to manage i don't want to be responsible for nobody's career but i do want to get you info but just like i had to pay for some info you gonna have to pay for it too if you're not going to take the time to go learn it yourself so that's kind of how my courses came about and once i made my first course i'm like well i know about growing followers on instagram too so i'm gonna make a course about that because i get a lot of questions right so all i just started getting questions on different things and i'm like boom i'm about to make a make a pdf uh, a little ebook whatever i'm just going every time you ask me a question i'm gonna figure out how i can create into a product which is what everybody should be doing because i'm a entrepreneur or aspiring entrepreneur right everything anything can be a product for me 
And artists need to start conducting themselves like that, like your business. You could mm-hmm. be, if you're an artist, if you're an engineer, you could teach a course on how to engineer. If you're an artist, you could be teaching other artists how to get your stage presence together, how to get your cadence right. Everything can be a product. You got to think like a business. And that's why we have Jay-Z, who has all different kinds of business. We have uh, DJ Khaled, all these people that are invested in so many other things that, of course, the regular fans don't see. They don't look at, you know? Right. All they see is music. Like, nah, man, they, they doing business. And people have to understand, you know, a lot of times artists never made mu- money off their music, right. you know, especially with particular deals that they had, especially with what they have a 360 deal out there that a lot of uh, companies are giving now where they're tapping into your merch, they're tapping into your, your stage presence, they're tapping into everything. Right. Um, well, back in the day, that wasn't the case. You know, you just, they would take a certain amount of points from the record sales and your tour and your merch was yours. And, um, the companies had to be smart because, you know, people started streaming on their own. They're like, well, we need to get more money somehow. And a lot of, a few artists have signed those 360 deals, you know. Um, and again, to your point, that's not a great entrepreneur move. That means you don't want to do nothing with nothing. You just want to try to get a check to get a check. At that point, you are, you're an employee at that point. Exactly. And them checks going to run out so quick. And then you just, yep. nine to five, you just clocking in like the rest yeah. of the world. You and know? You, so. you stuck over a seven album deal. <laughs> And right. got it, even got it. The first one from you. So. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> so without 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 giving too much, because I want people to go b- b- get your product, right? Mm-hmm. Can you give a couple of tips on IG of how to grow? You said you went from ten thousand to twenty thousand, and and somewhat in a, in a few in a few, uh, few months. How did you do that without giving too much? Could people? I want people to go to your your site and buy your course. Right. So um, the first thing that people got to understand when it comes to uh, Instagram or any social media platform is that you got to get your presence together. Um, So like in my course, I teach people like you need, most people need to delete everything, like every single post, start, start new, you know, figure out what your branding is. What are your colors? What colors do you use? What text do you use when you're creating flyers? You know, all of that stuff. What text do you do you use for your name? You know, all of these things, you got to start thinking about branding. What is the message that you want people to see when they come to your page? A lot of people say they artists, but they have like memes and like all kinds of random stuff that don't have nothing to do with being an artist. So I teach you like, yo, delete all of that. Then, um, you know, I tell them like you have to, like you said, you have to know what your niche is. You know, when you're an artist, what is your niche? What kind of content do you want to provide and that you can create without needing people? You know. All my content, I shoot it right from my cell phone. I don't have a camera. You know, I don't have all this editing equipment. I shoot it on my phone. I edit it on my phone and I post it from my phone, right? Eliminates everything. So it's like you got to figure out what type of content you can create on your own without having making this excuse like I don't have this person. I don't have that. I can edit my own pictures on my on my phone. Everything can be done on my phone, right? Yeah. So... Uh, picking out, you know, what is your style of content going to be? For me, videos work because I'm not really a photo girl. So all my content is pretty much video, right? And it's working for me. So you got to figure out what is going to work for you. What do you want your theme to be when it comes to your social media page? And then you have to start attracting people with your content. Before you even think about growing your page, you have to know that your content is attractive. Like, would you follow you with the content that you have, right? And then you have to get together, like even your bio in Instagram. A lot of people just, they put a lot of crazy stuff in their bios, metal fingers, curse words, whole bunch of hashtags. Like you got to be direct. What are you trying to sell? If you go to my bio, you'll see, it's going to talk about my main product. Then you click on my link and then you'll see, you know, you'll see little tabs for different stuff that I have. But right. whatever I'm selling, selling in my bio, that's going to be the first tab that you see. So you got to figure out what it is that you are selling. Don't say, oh, check my music out on SoundCloud or check my music out on YouTube. No, what is the specific song that you want me to check out? Like, you got to get specific because people do what you require them to do. You can't have them trying to do the work for you. I don't want to go right. fishing for your best song. You need to tell me what the best song is <laughs> and check that out, right? Right. So it's Absolutely. just like you have to be, you have to understand like your, your Instagram or your Facebook, whatever you use, that is your office. You know, so if you had a physical location, people coming in, you want it to look good, right? You want people to see stuff on the walls, whatever. You want it to look attractive. 
so people don't just turn around and walk away. So I really focus on cleaning up your Instagram, figuring out what type of content that you need to create or document and put out so that it keeps people engaged. Um, and then, um, you know, I, it goes into a little more, a, a little deeper, even, um, creating like the types of content, you know, I talk about content buckets, which, uh, basically is like having different categories of content. So, you know, what you need to create, having a content schedule or posting mm -hmm. schedule, um, to kind of take away the stress of trying to figure out like, what do I need to post today? What time should I put all of that? Like it just gets, gets everything in order. So you can start really, uh, arranging everything for your Instagram ahead of time. And then you can just sit back and just engage with people, you know, comment, respond to comments, respond to DMs, even go and, and like other people's stuff, comment on a stuff, figure out, you know, what accounts are closer to yours or similar to yours. So you can start, you know, targeting their followers and stuff like that. So it basically, my Instagram course teaches all of that. And it teaches you literally how to grow your following thousands of targeted, real engaged followers in months. So let me ask you, did you ever, did you look at my Instagram? Yes. What do you think? Give me an honest rating on it from a one to 10. Yeah. So, so your Instagram, um, like for you to be doing a podcast, I see, I wouldn't think if I didn't read anything in your bio and I just stumbled upon your page, I wouldn't know that you do a podcast. I didn't know that that was your main thing because I see like, um, different, just looking at it without clicking on it. It doesn't, it's like no real format. I see stuff with Mike. So I'm like, okay, maybe he's in music. Um, but it doesn't look branded to me. Okay. So off top, you know, and, and the one thing I tell people is like your top three posts will either get you a new follower or lose you a follower. So your top three posts, let's see, mm -mm -mm. don't tell me too much by looking at it. It doesn't say, yo, this person, is a, he has a podcast, I need to get on his podcast, or how can I, it, it doesn't tell me that I would have to click on it, I got to start reading, you know, which is, which the first line is talking about somebody else and their music. And it doesn't say anything about you being a podcast or you having anything into the last sentence where it says you can hear her story in the link above episode 36. So you're saying I shouldn't, I shouldn't promote the podcast episodes as when I'm doing it. I should promote no, it more as just myself. Should, I think you should, but I think it's different ways that you can do it. So I don't know if you uh, watch like a uh, brand man, Sean, um, Okay, Brand Man Sean is one of my mentors. He was actually my first interview. So one thing that he does when he does his interview, now he has a YouTube channel and he has like thousands of subscribers and everything. So I'm sure he done learned to do this over the year. But one thing he does when he does his interviews is he breaks his videos down into snippets, right? Little promo snippets that might be focusing on a specific topic that he's talking to with somebody. And then he'll put, then he has a, um, a format and even how he posts the video. Like it has the, the colored bars up here, the video is right. in it, so kind of like my videos. Yes. You know, and it has some text on it. So it's, so it shows him having this interview with me. So you can literally go to his page, it's very branded. His, his page is all about giving information just like mine. And then you can see him doing these interviews as well. And then you go to his bio and his bio is very specific. So on your bio, it says a podcast for the people YouTube channel coming soon. That's all it says. It doesn't tell me what it, it doesn't give me too much detail. And it definitely doesn't tell me to do anything. You're not saying listen to this episode right now. Click on the link. It just says a podcast for the people YouTube channel coming soon. So that just tells me, OK, maybe it's not together yet. It's coming soon. So that's what I mean when it's like you got to be really specific so that people don't have to ask questions when people come to your page, especially if they stumble on it on accident, they need to know by just looking at your bio, why do I need to follow you? If right. I'm an artist, I would need to follow you because you have a podcast and you interview 
artists, right? Or you deal with hip hop music, whatever, but your, your bio could be very, be a little more specific in saying what you do. So off top, it attracts people. And then they go down to yeah. your, your, yeah. uh, your post. So that's like one thing that I would say to you. I see, like, I would just say like to get a format, everybody that feels like that does stuff like we do, like you should have a, a format, something that's standard, that's uniformed. That's yeah. what, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Cause it's more attractive to the eye. Like it's just, so I have found a font that I've been using. Okay. So I've been using the same font to present Giant Nomad Presents because it was Giant Nomad Podcast. I was like, I don't want to do that. And even down to my, my goal for video for doing videos pretty soon, it's not going to be with front of a mic on a table. And right? that's kind of been done. Everyone does that. So I have an idea of how I'm going to become kind of a documentary style when mm-hmm. I do do the videos. Um, but you're right. I'm very humble. I, mean, I, don't want, I don't want a criticism. I'm glad you just tore me up because you're right. I got... But I need that, right? Because I, I, I need to grow. I right. want to grow, right? So, yeah, so you're absolutely right. So I do need to fix that. And the branding piece I worked, I just changed the actual branding to, you see there, the diamond with the JN and Giant Nomad. So I just did that. That's brand new branding. Before, it was just my face with me with some red sunglasses. Right. So that's to get people understanding this is who I am. But you're right. As far as my bio, it's fucking crap. Right, you could definitely so I, go in, uh, I had to ask work, and I just found Linktree as well. I just found out about Linktree two weeks ago. Okay. So I was like, okay. I said, so this is dope. I saw somebody with them. I was like, what is this? They have multiple right. links. I use Linktree. Yeah. Yes. Actually, it was because of you. So, okay. so um, then I put down you know episodes every Monday. So I am st- I'm standardized where every Monday I drop an episode every Monday once a week. So that um, I'm gonna work on as well. And you're right. Like, you know, I just passed a thousand followers maybe a, a month or two ago, maybe a month ago, because I was at 800 for a long time. And then when I did some changes, it actually worked. And people started finding me and did more, so much stuff. But to your point, becoming more standard, becoming more uniformed. Um, I do notice that when I do put, put up a video, I get a lot more hits than I do a regular post. Right. And now that IGTV, we like to see action, we like to see stuff. Exactly, and and because and for me it wasn't because I'm uncomfortable in front of video. I just didn't like the concept of doing it over the computer, right? So my goal is to get more local people in Atlanta because I've been speaking to people all over the world, right? So I've been and people in Bali, people in Canada, they can't make it to Atlanta, right? I spoke to a lot of people in California. Yourself, you're in Texas, you can't be here, <laughs> right? So things like that. So I'm like, no, do I really want to do that kind of computer engagement? I'm going to try it out, see how it works. But the main goal by end of year, I um, have the equipment, have real life conversation, documentary style. Um, and it's going to be really cool. I'm going to have lavalier mics. not going to have the whole boom mic type of thing. Right. Like, like I said, every, it's, it's, it's been there, done it already. Everyone has a table and microphones. Right. Um, you and, know it's like... Like, I know it's like one thing with us as creators, we always like want to have the best of the best, but like people don't even care. People just want the opportunity. So like this right here is awesome because it's like, now it's not the pressure of me having to be in your city. Like you having the mic, exactly. and that, it looks like you're official to me and for artists to be put on your platform, they're going to appreciate it. You know, they don't care about all the fancy glamorous stuff that you may have. Like this, this right here will be awesome. Because now they just are on a platform where somebody took the time to like really get into them and their passion and put it in front of their followers. So it's like, you don't, I mean, glowing up is always A1. You know what I mean? We all want to glow up with stuff. But it's just like, yo, this right here is awesome. And then people love to follow journeys. You know what I mean? Like people love to say like, boom, I was following Johnny when he only had 800 followers. Now he got this. Now I see the glow up. I see how his branding is changing. Like people notice that. Yes. And and that what makes that's what gives you like that real organic following. Like people love a come up because then they can say, I knew him way back when I've been listening to your show for all these years. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's like you gotta appreciate that and you just gotta know, like, boom, I don't even need all that fancy stuff. My content is so solid that they're just gonna eat it up regardless of what yeah. the background. If you know, if I got a clean shave, it don't matter. They're gonna yeah. eat it regardless. No, you're absolutely right, and it's weird because my podcast is actually doing better than my IG account. <laughs> 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 so I have to flip that around, or just 
kind of can't get one caught up. Let you know, know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? We can get the teaching in. I teach oh, yeah. Real quick. That's what I'm saying. We're, we're going to talk about that behind the scenes. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. yeah. We're gonna see what we can swap out and definitely get some insight on that. Because no, you're right. I I, I want to learn, and that's and this is what people need to understand: to take criticism and don't get personal with that shit. Right. right? Listen to what someone is saying. That you ask for it, listen to it, right. and then take it. And then and people have to understand too. Like again, your vision, your, what you're telling me is not a vision. You're just telling me a, you, you're telling me the standard of what to do. Right. Now, if, if someone's telling you about your vision is crap. Then you have to look at well, I'm a creator. My vision is my vision. Right. Let me let me validate myself before I give you validation. But what you just told me made all the sense in the fucking world because I've been looking at my accounts like, how can I make this different? How can I make it more impactful, more powerful? So then people are saying, you know, I want to I want to stick around. I want to be more active and things like that. Because I have things worked down the pipeline that I've been working on. Yeah. And the same right now, I'm working on a YouTube channel. It's not. I'm not even. I'm not going to promote it to probably another two weeks from now, right? Yeah. It's going to have all the audio on there, and you're going to be the first video one. Mm-hmm. And going forward, I'm going to continue doing these videos right. like this, right? That's just going to be fun. But now you can still collect the old content that has the audio. Mm-hmm. It's going to have my brand on it, Giant Nomad Presents, with the JN in the middle, right? with the episode number, and keeping real simple, clean. That's what I want. I want simple, clean. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be a whole kind of bright and shiny. It's going to simple, clean right, shit. Right. And that's what I think artists have to understand too. Is you don't have to be like the Takashi Six Nine with the rainbow hair to stand out. You just have to be yourself and present yourself in a way that people can digest it. Right, and you just gotta start. Like a, a lot of people will hold themselves off because they feel like I don't have the right stuff yet. I don't have the look yet. I don't have the clothes. I don't have the equipment. Like, listen, man, stop holding yourself from doing what you know you could be doing. Right now, just allow yourself to grow naturally. You'll get Absolutely. there. You know, Absolutely. What I'm you you need new equipment. You'll get there. Start doing what you're doing. Start getting your followers up. They're gonna start investing into you. Everything is a process. This is my first podcast, which I have, and it's called um, uh, damn, the loss that stopped that stopped me was with a boxing coach, yeah. and we did it in the back of his stock room. He was actually a manager of a Pet Boys. I went to his stock room. It was on my iPhone. I put the iPhone on the damn table and we as put record and we started talking. Right. And it sounded, it still sounded great. It sounded bad. I was like, wow, this is pretty damn dope. But to your point, use what you have. These these phones are a thousand dollars a clip. You got equipment right now in your hand. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? It it does mostly everything like you said, for you, you do everything on it. It's everything. fantastic. You know what I'm saying? So Again, people have to realize what they have. You don't need all the fancy shit. You really don't. Like when my wife started her YouTube channel, she started out just with her tablet. She was recording because we didn't have a, already a good camera. Then we started using her phone. Then we got a better camera. Then we started looking at production value. So then, if you see my background right here, this is actually my house, and we took out the dining room. So we have a whole studio inside our dining room. Right. We tell the kids go fucking eat someplace else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. But I'm not going to rent a space. I'm not. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Once I get bigger and I have more income, a bigger income stream, then I can look at, you know what? It makes more sense for us to move to production into its own space. But you can convert a room, especially if you're going to be an artist, convert your fucking closet to a studio. Get, you know, you can go to the wish shop and get some freaking, you know, some spiked uh, foam for your walls. Yeah. It may get here in two months, but you know... <laughs> You can get that and turn your your your, your whole your whole closet into a studio. Like, yeah. It's very simple to do. Ah, man, you gotta do it yourself. You gotta figure it out. You gotta. You do everything that I've that I've learned. I've literally went and checked it out. If I got an idea, I'm on. I'm hitting YouTube up ASAP. Like, how Listen. can I do this? Even even using my phone before I use my video, I went to YouTube and looked up. You know how to record on your phone. I found a video that told me about an app that enhances your phone because it gives you like real camera settings. And, you know, I just started doing it from there. I always go back and like just try to learn. And I think that's what we got to do. We have to continuously try to learn while we're using what we got. Learn how to use it to the to the max. And then you're going to start growing. And, you, you know, sometimes I'm getting to the point where like I like using my phone 
one at one of these points I'm gonna use a camera. But for right now, my phone is just like it gets it done for me. Exactly. And and that's what it is. It's about, it's about growth, right? So exactly. once you start growing and you see your production value when you level that up, then you know that coming for myself, I know how in the future how I want this engagement to look like and be. Right. I already have written down the equipment I'm gonna need to make that happen. Yeah. My goal is for 2020 to make that happen. So 2019 is all about foundation building. And that's what artists have to understand. Build your foundation and start making music. Not necessarily posting it yet. Just start making music. See how you're growing in your music. Is this the sound you want to go with? Right. Right. Um, is your lyrical content smart? Is it clever? Right. Mm-hmm. Are you even are you even going that route? Are you going for more heavy, um, more ad lib type rappers? You know what I'm saying? And just more of a, of the beats gonna carry you type of rapper. Right. You know, you have to figure those things out, build your foundation. So then, guess what? You can build your brick building on top of that, and no one's gonna fuck with it after that. Yeah. It makes sense. You know what I'm saying? I definitely agree. You know, because you have to build first. Like people have to understand that, and the, and the hip hop world. Like you know, everything we talk about right now, even though it wasn't pertaining to hip hop, it does pertain to hip hop. Like everything that you, we talked about just now is all about entrepreneurship, by leveling up, by taking the time out, by taking criticism, by being able to ask either a friend or a stranger, "Hey, what do you think? Give right. me your honest, give me your honest feedback." And if you're not ready for the honest feedback, don't fucking ask the question. Right. And that means you're not ready yet. So sit the fuck back down. And I think people got to get more comfortable with actually giving their real, real opinion. Also, you know, a lot of people don't like to have that conversation when they know they about to say something that's not going to be sounding good to that person. You know, a lot of people don't want to say like your music don't sound good, especially if you ask somebody who loves you, you know, uh, mm-hmm. they want to be like, Oh, it's cool. It's cool. You know, they ain't going to say it's trash. You know, most of the time, sometimes you got those real ones around you, hopefully, yeah. but most people don't have that around you. And then strangers, they don't have to uh, tell you that. They just don't listen to you. You know, yeah. they just don't entertain you. You know, so I think we have to, as people in general, we got to get better with, um, you know, giving not even an opinion, but just it, it's like it's not enough to tell somebody that something is bad. You have to tell them why. Correct. Yeah. Because just saying something is trash is kind of dismissive. Right. You, you know have what I'm saying? Struggle yeah. at the same time. So you got to be like, no. It doesn't sound good because you're off beat because your mix don't is not good. You you know you gotta have reasons why to Correct. help people grow, and that's why a lot of people can't take criticism because people don't they don't follow up after they give you an answer that you don't want to hear. They don't follow up with any type of instruction on what you can do to become better. You know, so we gotta get better with that as people. Like we we can't just shoot people down. We have to really explain why we feel away so they can get it and understand it and work on it and be better. And then it'll be better for people to take criticism because if I just came at your page and I'm like, oh, this page is trash, content bad, but I didn't give you anything else. If I just left it there, you'd have been like, well, dang, Lady J. But it's like I, I can give you pointers on what to do and that's really coming from a factual place, not even an opinion-based place because these are the things that I personally did that I know work for me and that's working for some, some of my other clients. And that's why I can even give out this information. Like I can say, nah, you need to do this because this is what I did in the work. This is what my clients did in the work. So right. boom, it should work for you too. Right? right. So it's like factual information instead of just giving an opinion, you know, that, that doesn't really matter. And that's what people have to, people have to decipher the two. So if someone just tells me I'm trash, then I'm going to say, I like to listen to your ass. You're not telling me nothing. I need, I need some, Yeah. You're just a hater at that point. Fuck you. You're still going to listen to my shit at the end anyway. Right? right? But to your point, if someone breaks it down, I could respect that. I could say, you know what? You're not saying the music is bad. You're saying everything else around the music is bad. Right. Or you may be saying everything else is great, but you need to work on your craft. Yeah. And that's honest feedback. People who play instruments didn't fucking wake up blowing a fucking flute out their ass automatically. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, it took time to learn what a note is, what the sound of the note should be, right? All that is taught. Like, you know, I, I can blow into a flute, but guess what? It's going to sound like shit. Right. You need fucking practice, right? Saxophone, piano, all that shit. The same thing with rapping. If you're going to put lyrics together, are you a true poet? You know what I'm saying? And if you're not, how do you build yourself up to be a songwriter? Because you have poetry that turns into music. 
you have people who don't know, don't know how to write poetry, but they're great at writing songs and song structure, and also learning proper song structure, learning what bars are, learning what the hook is, you know, going to that, learning what the bridge is, like having all the information to make a nice structured song. Songs sound great because there's structure around it. You know what I'm saying? No one's rapping for three minutes straight without no hook for a fucking reason. Right. <laughs> right. There is there is a purpose you know I mean, <laughs> to this format. Exactly. And people remember more of the hook than the lyrics anyway, right? That's what catch people in the beginning. And then true fans become students of your music. And at that point, then that's when they you can go to any concert you go to and people know every single fucking song. Exactly. And that's when you know your, you have your true audience, not just followers, but your true fucking audience. Right. You know what I'm saying? Man, you're, you're dope as fuck, bro. I'm oh, telling you right now. You dope. You dope. <laughs> this interview is great. I'm feeling good. No, yeah. This is what, this is what I do. We get this, it's this conversation. Like, it's not, and I know that I have questions mixed into it, but it's really just us just chopping it up. What are you talking about? What's going on? Like really what's what's helping these folks like with information. Like I speak to artists, I speak to entrepreneurs. You know, the 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 episode I have coming up is gonna be I was just an entrepreneur out of San Diego. Yeah. He's a veteran, he makes watches. It's insane. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm speaking to CEOs as well, right. which is fantastic, you know. Um, things of that nature. Then I speak and I actually had I'm talking to people with addictions. You know what I'm saying? Uh Last week, I spoke to somebody who had a sex addiction. It was crazy. Oh, you know what I'm saying? That was a two and a half hour podcast. Because <laughs> uh, I didn't want to edit shit. It had so much content. I was like, yo, this is wow. Right. Uh, it ha- had me like not talking for me. I was like, oh, shit. I gotta, I'm the host. I got to right. ask a question. <laughs> like, holy shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, so like, and when I, and I tell people, like, yo, this is really for the people for a reason. Because mm-hmm. that's why I changed it to Johnny Nomad Presents. I'm presenting you. You know what I'm saying? Not really presenting myself. Right. I'm presenting your story, your content, so you can be the best you possible, and you can use this for however you want to fucking use it for. Yeah. And I feel like there's not enough podcasts for our people and as a whole. Right. You know, we're on the come up, no doubt, but we tend to follow trends like you were saying before. We're all trying to just carbon copy something. Yeah. Now, and it took me a while because I was like, oh, I don't want to just do something just to fucking do it. Like if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna do it. Then this has to be me, right? It has to be, and people have to accept me for me. And if you look at my IG, it's it's me. I gotta clean it up, like you said, with some standards around it. Right, just, right. just trash right now. Get you together now. We yes, I appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? So then, at that point, whatever I can give back, because my whole point is, yo, I, I want to give, give, give. You know what I'm saying? I wanna, I wanna make connections. I wanna thrive together and support other minorities. And by you do the same thing with your knowledge. And if to your point, like I, I'm going to your IG, you have so much information on there for free. And to your point, people are not listening to it, but then you're selling the same shit that you already disclosed to them already. Right. It's fucking genius. <laughs> <laughs> I'll edit that part out. But listen, <laughs> but it's it's but that's again, it's so, but it's was- about listen. It's about time, right? If I don't have the time to scroll down your entire IG to get the information, I want to go to that one true source. Yep. And that one resource is your course. Right? As I know, you know what? I've got time to scroll to her IG for the next six months to find out what she said six months ago. Because right. most people, they're not going through your IG that far. Only some true stalkers are going through their shit that far. Oh, I got some stalkers now. I you got know what I'm saying? Stalkers. But unless you really, want, like awesome. I said, yeah, unless people really <laughs> see your content for what it is, with a wealth of knowledge, and they're studying you, then yes. By all means, scroll all the way to the fucking beginning of time. You know what I'm saying? And get and get and, and get your knowledge. But your course makes so much fucking sense because that's not available. Not in the way you present it either. Because you mad gutter, you mad just out there and true. You know what I'm saying? Which I, I love. And that's what is needed. Like we don't need to be pussyfooting around. We don't need to be just soft and sugarcoating shit. Yeah. Saying that it needs to be honest. So, by saying that, how does your radio show work? What do you exactly? What do you do in your radio show? So, I just recently started up uh, the Blueprint Radio Show. So, first of all, the radio show it launches on an app called Station Head. Okay. All right. It's a fairly new ha- app. Um, you actually have to have an iPhone right now to tune into it. But the app allows 
anybody to come on there and make a station. It is partnered with um, Spotify, and Apple Music. So all of the music that spins on there, you know, this is getting tracked. Artists are getting royalties for this. Um, so with that being said, I started it up. Uh, I'm actually an ambassador for them at the moment um, with my show. And because I'm like new to this, you know, I wasn't doing podcasts and everything. All of this stuff is new to me. So, you know, I wanted to have a platform where I could spend indie artist music, do interviews uh, where people can get feedback from, you know, everybody else listeners. So on my show, I literally do like music reviews. Now, the format is changing because like you said, you know, I'm growing up I'm learning. I did it a couple of times. So I'm like, all right, I'm learning because I literally be on the show for like two hours. I'll be trying to get off of there, but people just. <laughs> Yeah. They be like, oh, they be they be tuned in. But so uh so right now, you know, we do the music reviews. So inside the app, um, all the artists that's that downloaded it and is tuning in within the app, they can actually uh hit a search button and find their song and request it, which shows up in our chat box. So I can just click it and then play the song. I can actually uh call them up to where they're live. We're talking. So I always like to call them up. We do a little um, talk, ask them about their self. Then we get into the song. Now, at the same time, I go live on IG from another device. Okay. So so we have people on IG. And you can kind of get out of the app and be on other things at the same time. So the artists that I'll be interviewing, they're like on my IG live at the same time. So I play their song. We get feedback from people inside the app. We get pe- feedback from people on IG live. And people, some people just be super good, like trash, blah, blah. Like, they be so gutted with it, but it's crazy. But the great thing about it is that so many artists have been connecting to each other through this app. Now, another thing with this app is once you're you're on the app, that means you have your own station, regardless if you want to do a show or not. But uh, it's a lot of people on the app. So when they hear your song playing from one station, so when they hear an artist song playing on my station, they can actually click it and add it to their station. So if I have 50 people on my station uh logged into the app on my station while your song is playing that means you get, you just got 50 streams not like just one stream you know but like whoever's in there that's how many streams you got and this is the reason why i really like the app and this is the reason why i felt like it was really beneficial for artists for me to have that now moving forward i am transitioning um i'm going to be focusing more on doing like a, a full interview uh for the first hour of the show so it's still going to be a two-hour show but for the first hour, we're going to be interviewing like two artists at a time. And um, then the last hour, the second hour, we're going to get into the music reviews for everybody else that was logged in. Mm-hmm. Um, regardless if they're in the app, I try to get to people on IG too. I have them text the number. Um, as long as the music is on Apple Music, I can go inside the app, find it and play it. And then we run the music reviews. So it's been like, you know, I, I literally been super busy, so I haven't even been able to do it in this last week. I'm just getting back to Texas, so I plan on doing it this Sunday. But the show is supposed to air on Sundays and Wednesdays, you know. At what um, time? At 7 p.m. Eastern. 7 Eastern? Eastern, yeah. Okay. That's um, dope. I, I, I like it. I think that's needed, you know, because people need to get that, that information at the beginning stage, that infancy right. stage. You know what I'm saying? Like... Once you kind of make it, like, even for me when I'm talking to folks, I don't want to talk to famous people. I want to talk to the people who are at the lower level doing shit, at their hard work. Like you said earlier, like, I was following him at 800, now they're at 100 grand. Like, the same thing with us. Like, I want to to talk to normal folks all the time. That's entrepreneurs that say, hey, you know what? If she's doing it, damn well, I can do it too. Exactly. You know, because- I preach to my indies. Like, you don't even see my shirt. This shirt, my shirt. Let's see it. It says, ah. it says nah. nah, bitch. I'm indie. I love it. I want one. <laughs> I actually, this is actually one of my merchandise. So this is on my website for people to buy. So look so. at that. So look at that. So she has courses. She has her merch. She got the radio station. There's a trifecta right there. You see that happening, right? Man, How right? she's branding herself. She's making shit happen. She's a fucking entrepreneur. She's not aspiring one. She's she is one, folks. Like. Come on, like you gotta respect the game. I, I respect your fucking gangster, like it's no joke. Man, I, I thank you. I appreciate you having me on the show. I was, I'm a little nervous because, like I said, it's only my second interview, so I'm like, you know, the first interview I was a little more uptight, a little more like trying to be politically correct. Nah, nah man, 
Now I'm just spamming. No, um, no, you have to be free with it because that's the whole point, right? People have to, you have a presence online and people have to, I want the same person I see on IG on here. Right. And I got that. Like if you really came through on some seriousness, I would have stopped the show and like, yo, can we talk for a second? Right. <laughs> Where are you? Who are you? Like I need the person that's on IG. Like that's the person that I see. Right. You know what I'm saying? So like, I want that, I want that realness. I think, and that's the realness that people really need. You're going to go far. Oh, you just, you have, you have the recipe. You just, it's, and it's baking. It's still in the oven, which is fantastic. You smell it. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's, it's going through the cribs, going outside in, in the neighborhood. Like people, they smell it. They're like, where the fuck that shit's coming from? You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's dope as fuck. Like, and it's all about making connections that we said earlier about networking. So every time I interview someone, I tell them they're part of the family. And though that was hard for me, but I still do it anyway, I text everybody back. And I say, yo, how you doing? What's going on? How can I support you back? Because that's what it's about. How can I support you? Do you need me? You for like when your shit really blows up. Hey, you know what? Let me know. I'll post on my IG. Yo, go here with the link. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? That's how we need to be. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because if connection, that's really that, network. Network that's is about. net worth. So because let's say you come to Atlanta to visit, I'm like, yo, you stopping by, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, like, you know what's crazy? I didn't even know you were in Atlanta because I literally was out in Atlanta for like two weeks. I just got back to Texas. Uh, I mean, I come to Atlanta a lot anyway because, you know, I lived in Atlanta right. for two years before I moved here. So I go back and forth a lot. But um, I, I didn't even know you were in Atlanta at first. Yeah. So that means next time you can come, in, come through, you got to let me know and we'll oh. chop it up in person. You know what I'm saying? And it will be recorded as... And we just talked. I had to be in about music. This, this, we just bullshit around. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the dope shit about it. And the, like, I had this dude, his name is Tommy in, in Bali in Indonesia. He was like, yo, as soon as you have your concept down for your video, he's like, I'm going to be your first one down. And I was like, that's love right there. For, that's support. You're coming from across right. the world to come to the A. I'm like, and that's the type of connection I make with folks. Because people know that I'm real shit. I'm yeah. not going I'm not, I'm not to I'm not gonna lie to you. This is who I am. I have my day job. I got this that I'm aspiring to, making shit happen. It's growing. If not, I wouldn't be doing this shit. Right. I'm, I'm already booked out with guests until May. I have already recorded episodes already. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I don't, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, but that's what you have to do, right? You have to you have to draw up your bank. And that's what, like, if anybody has to learn from anybody, look at Tupac. The man was dead. He came out with like 11 more albums. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> 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 you know what I'm saying? Somebody planned that out real good. And you know what? Because you know what? He lived in the studio. He wanted to make music, and he kept on recording. What yeah. happened with Biggie? Biggie got shot. He had his double album come out. That was it. And then and then Puffy had to kind of pie- piecemeal that kind of special one with the features he had from folks, but he had to reuse verses anyway from right. the original. You know, so that goes to show you, like, you got to put your work in. No doubt it's time to, to if you want to party, vacation, do your thing, absolutely do that. But man, you got to put a lot of work in. You need to be in the studio perfecting your fucking craft. Create, create, create. And then when you stop, get back up and create some more. Like, exactly. you got to. Like you, like you said earlier, man, like you have to love this shit. Like, Dude. you can't be passionate. It's got to be a purpose. It's more business than it is music or, you know, whatever you do. Like, we all have absolutely. a passion and that's why we start stuff. But when we really started, we figured it out like, yo, it's way more about the business side. Your passion is like 20% of it. But right. that 80% is work. <laughs> it is. You got to put in 80% work. And then you focus on because your passion is going to come easy. It's going to come naturally. Yeah, but absolutely. that work to get it going, to keep it afloat, to, you know, make sure you're getting paid or getting whatever you need to get from it. It just, it takes a lot of work. And people, for your branding efforts, you can go to Fiverr. And get something done for on a cheap. You know, there's so many different websites or apps you can go to to procure resources. You exactly. know what I'm saying? Like, That's so don't I'm think it's no some, excuses. It's not. There's no not. excuses. No, like I said, I'm 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 budgeting for a media campaign coming soon. You know what I'm saying? Because I really want to promote the YouTube joint. Really want to get. I, I, I'm on it. I got. <laughs> I'm on it. Let yeah, me. man. Like, and so I'm do, I'm doing that. So then, because when people come on. They got to know that my audience is going to fuck with them too. That yeah. it's, it's going to transition. They're going to have some people jumping over. And that's what I want as well. So if I have a small audience, people are like, yo, why am I going to go on your podcast for? 
You know what I'm saying? Um, but people fuck with me because I'm dope. <laughs> so it's like, exactly. it's, it's, it's just, it is what it is. So people are loving it. The podcast is getting great ratings. You are amazing. You give out so much information on your IG. You're straight gutter with it, no matter where you're at. You know what I'm saying? You you have your fucking radio, your radio shit. You have your fucking courses. And you go click on her link. She has about seven fucking courses up there. Like, shit, you're not. Like, this, this course is upon courses. She even got some on sale right now. So if I'm telling you right now, click on her link, and you're going to get some good deals and some courses right now, too. That's up there. Um, before she changes that shit, <laughs> make it regular price again. <laughs> but uh, the sales to, to be limited. <laughs> absolutely, and the whole thing for me too to see a black woman having the entrepreneur spirit, a young black woman at that, being successful, having the knowledge, it does amazing things for the culture. You know what I'm saying? And it shows our value and our wealth to other people. You know what I'm saying? That yo. We're smart too, motherfuckers. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, we can do this. Like, okay. don't get it twisted. You know what I'm saying? And just because you're fucking with the hip hop world does not lessen what you're doing right now. Because what you're doing right now, if it was in a different sp- space, you'd be a fucking professor. So, right now, you're a fucking professor right now. Let's get that straight. You know what I'm saying? And that's not just a fucking toot your own horn and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're the truth. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. I had to get you on. I, I swear. Yep. Now I'm gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I, I just, just listen on the real. Like, I want to fuck with you because you, you're doing real shit. I'm gonna fuck with you because you're saying some shit. Your presence, your demeanor, your words, or wisdom is coming through. If I was, if I, ain't, if I ain't take any value to your word, I wouldn't have asked you about my my IG. Right. I'm like, yo, let me get this podcast through. Let me get it done. Let me get it on. Let me get it off. Let me edit this shit. Yo, you're just gonna come on this date this month. Boom, be done with it. Nah. Like, whoever is on my podcast is because I want to learn and build with them. Right. And I found and I find everybody who's on my podcast interesting. And that's how I get you on. Okay. I'm like, yo, if, you, if I find you interesting enough and your story is really holds true to me, I'm a, I'm a fuck with you then. Because I know if I'm liking it, some uh, somebody else is gonna like it too. Right. Exactly. And then my audience is gonna find me because my audience is gonna be similar to me. The same way your audience is gonna be similar to you. And the 7.6 billion people on this planet, we all can have a little slice of the pie. Right. You know what I'm saying? And right. that's that's what artists have to understand. Like, no doubt, there's competition. But then again, there really isn't. Right. You know really growing. I mean, because you're helping me grow. I'm going to help you grow. Us collabing and putting each other out to our following is going to get eyes on us both ways. So. I mean, it's a win-win. You know, people don't like to say I'm using you, but like, nah, use me because I'm saying yeah. use too. You know what I mean? You got to use each other to get what you want, you know? Absolutely. So, like, listen, if, if equal, back, equal. back in the day, people bartered for shit. Like, if I didn't have something, I would give you sheep for butter, whatever it is, right? <laughs> it's the same difference. We're bartering. Like, you know, you can use my platform and I'm going to use your platform so we can just win together. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And that's what people have to understand. That's what I think our our culture has to get better at. That we need to really look at each other and say, "Yo, you have exactly what I need. I'm not good at this, but I am good at this. Do you need this? Right. Let's let's, let's swap out a little bit, something. You know what I'm saying? Or even that. And it doesn't have to be reciprocal at the same time. It could be, "Yo, I got you right now, but guess what? Six months from now, I might tap you and say, "Yo, I need your help. Do you do you mind? And that's okay to do. You know right. what I'm saying? But again, what it is is that people surround themselves with a fucked up circle. Yeah. And they have that little person in the ear that don't know shit that's just hoping that person blows up so they can milk off of them or mooch off of them and shit. Right. But you can't have that no more. Those days of Haggis said, having 40 heads on the back of you on the stage, nobody wants to fuck with you no more in a venue like that. They'll tell you straight out, you're not getting on my stage. Right. Like, get your people. Now, unless, you, unless you deal with some trashy ass promoters. But real promoters are going to be like, yo, we're not getting with 40 heads. What are you doing? You know what I'm saying? Like it makes no sense. We like, exactly. people want to perform. And I'm telling you cats right now. I personally like if you fucking stop the goddamn features. Everybody, I see hip a lot of hip hop artists, even in the IG account, saying, "Yo, hit me up for a feature." You're just trying to make a bet. You're just trying to make a quick buck. You're not even really trying to be like a collaboration should be special. It shouldn't be so diluted. A feature should be like, yo, musically, sonically, it makes sense because we vibe together. Because if you're just sending me a fucking goddamn link to a to your to your to your 
um, your beat over email, and I got to rap here a thousand miles away, I'm not vibing with you. I'm not feeling what you're saying. Right. Now, if we're in the studio together, some organic shit happens, man, then, yeah, I want to listen to that shit. Yeah. But don't come out with a fucking album, your first EP, and you have six features and only five songs. Come on, man. Like, do the math. Like, you can't, you can't have that shit. Like, I don't know. Maybe I'm, I'm going to the wrong advice. What do you think about that? I mean, I feel you. I feel you. Uh, unfortunately, you know, that's the way a lot of things go these days. You know, people are just, they sit in tracks. They getting people on there just because of uh, who they are. Uh, and, and then they putting out the song. But we know when certain people are together and they and then when they come up with that fire, you know, we yeah. know when that happens because you can feel it. A lot of times people show it, you know, we, we get some artists that's in the studio with like, they like, yo, we in here cooking up. We, you know, we getting it cracking right now. You, they get excited and they do show that to us. So you can kind of tell when people are in the studio together or when they're not together. Um, and people don't understand, like it gives you a totally different feel when you with somebody and you vibing and y'all coming up with something at the same time, like you literally feed off of that energy yes. versus you sending something to somebody. Because when you do that, it's like, now you wonder what they saying. Then you get the song back. You're like, Oh, that verse is hot. Let me go ahead and change my verse. Exactly. Like, it becomes a competition now, yep. you know, instead of a collaboration. So it's like you competing on the same song. So, I mean, I, I definitely feel what you're saying. We, we artists just got to get better with that, but I think that's something that they need to learn how to do and, and learn to work with other people. Our, our people, minorities in general, we have to learn how to stop trying to be number one all the time and understand that we can all be number one. Yeah. You know, I don't have to be above you for me to be like, yeah. Oh, I'm going to take, I'm going to, I'm going to take this, um, you know, this interview with you, uh, because I know you got a thousand followers, you know what I mean? Or 10,000 followers. It's like, no, nah, I'm going to take it with you because you reached out to me and asked me. And I thought that was something dope. Like I, a lot of times we feel like we're above certain things or certain people just because of what we see. And then we bypass people up, you know, we just pass them up. Yeah. And I think we just got to be more open to like working with people. Cause you never know. You can only have a thousand followers on Instagram, but you your podcast following could be crazy. You know, everybody yeah. is a social media guru. You feel me? So it's like, yo, you got to be willing to just open yourself up, uh, take those opportunities because you never know what it's going to lead to. No, absolutely. Think. You're actually right. And and this helping other people out is huge. And it, you get that back. You definitely get that back. And, and you can't always think about monetary. It's all about just people fucking with you. And they're gifting you back something. And then later on, yeah, it will equate to an equal sign on the plus side for you monetarily. You know what I'm saying? And right. that's where people really have to understand that that shit. If you don't, then you're highly mistaken of what you, how you're going to succeed. Because no matter how hard you want to do something on your own, you're going to need some help. Yeah. And you need help from the right people. The circle you have are behind you for a reason. Because they can't offer you nothing in front of you. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you have to make sure that, yo, you get a lot of people that's around you that's smart, that's strategic, that are going to help you progress. Right. You know what I'm saying? Keep your circle small. You don't need, like I said, 40 heads to be in there. You know, why, why are you trying to, to pay the whole neighborhood for? Exactly. I, I, I get what you're doing. I get what you're trying to say. But it's like you can, you can do all that without doing all that. You know right. what I'm saying? If you want to give back to the hood. You know what I'm saying? But man, yo, this has been amazing. This conversation, I gotta say. I'm, I'm, I'm so excited that you, you know, brought me on. I definitely appreciate it. I can't wait to like be able to put it out. Absolutely. And and, and send some send send some of my followers your way because you know if I if I drop it and tell people like boom, y'all better go get y'all an interview. Yeah, no doubt. Like, okay. and that's my thing. If if you qualify them, they can't be trash. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So if <laughs> I tell cool. you right now, if if you qualify them and you say, yo, Johnny, I got somebody, you, you DM me, I'm going to give you my number, you have my personal shit, I'm going to hit you up to do that. And you and you text me saying, yo, I got somebody for you. Then that's all I need to know. That's, you know the, that's one thing I was going to say to you about your, um, you know, your Instagram, because it, I don't see, I don't see a link to where people can um, submit themselves. That's what you need to have. Well, yeah. So that's, I'm also working on a website as well now. Okay. So, once I get the website, I'm gonna do an email funnel. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So I'm working on all that, all those funnels. I'm gonna need to get 
so they can submit stuff. Um, I am going to probably put that in the bio. Hey, I have said it in a few podcasts. I, I did put it one time in in a photo, but again, it was if people are going to read it or not. Say, hey, if, you, if you're interesting, hit me up. I have been getting a lot of referrals though. So whoever I, ha- I have been guesting on, All right. they've been hit, giving me two or three other people to talk to. So it's yeah. been it's, it's been I, amazing. I think got some dope artists um, that uh, that literally I've just started to get to know just because they've been following me and they've been a part of my. Um, my show um just requesting a music so i'm like yo it's it's really some indie artists out there with some dope music now you get a lot of them that's questionable you know right like eh. but you get those gems and those are the ones that start to really stand out um so i definitely got a, a couple artists that i can send you away or tell them to, to go and, and talk to you about an interview or whatever i think that you would yeah. really them. Um, they moving and shaking yeah because they, they got to be ready for i'm gonna go deep into the background like yo like I want to get the whole full story. Yo, if you've been molested, I want to hear it. Like, <laughs> like all of it. That's part of it. Where, where is this music coming from? What is this anger or this happiness coming from in your life? Like, people want to know. Right, you know right, right. And, and, so, yeah. and people want to know the artist. So having this content is huge because if they just see you as that kind of fixture on, on IG or on a, on a small screen on your phone, they want to know more about your bio. And when you have an interview, that gives so much more wealth of knowledge to people about you. Right. And then, so and it also teaches you how to speak and how to talk even about yourself and how to present your story. And, you know, it's really like practice, especially if you're not used to doing it. Like, that's why I said, this is, I'm, I'm really like getting in my bag with these interviews <laughs> now. Like I got me, y'all getting me feeling some type of way. Like you need but, to, cause it's going to happen more and more. Get ready for it. You know what I'm saying? Say, definitely. And I tell people all the time, I'm not going to be really good at this until I hit a thousand episodes. That's how I feel. Mm-hmm. Where I, when I listen back to a lot of the episodes, I say, man, you missed this question. Or, man, you got caught up in the conversation too much. Or, yo, you spoke too fucking much. Shut the fuck up next time. Or, but then I'm saying, no, but hold on. That's you. That's what makes you different. So, yeah, fix the, some, tweak some of this stuff, mm-hmm. but still keep, keep your core, keep your essence going. Exactly. Exactly. You so, know what I'm saying? So, man. yeah. It's all great, man. I just, I just feel good. I'm thankful, definitely thankful for you having me on. No, I'm, I'm thankful for you and fucking with me, even taking my DM because you're like, yo, there's a stranger in my DM. What the fuck is he doing here? <laughs> you know I know it took me a while to like get with you. No, but I'm like. Okay. I'm appreciative of, of of anyone who's even willing to fuck with me, and if it takes a month to book you, I'm okay with that. You know what I'm saying? Because I know you're busy. I'm fucking busy too. You know what I'm saying? Like I got another podcast tomorrow, you know, talking to someone in North Carolina. Um, mm-hmm. she and she has a book she's coming out with. So that's that's gonna be badass. I got somebody on Monday already. Like, so I, I record six that's or seven times a week. Baby. Yeah, that's I record crazy. I do I do six to seven podcasts a week. Oh wow. That's why I have so many already out for, for May, going into May. And um, but that's how I wanna do. I wanna I wanna be the Tupac of podcasting. You know what I'm saying? I want to have all this just ready to go. I edit them ahead of time. I start getting the graphics done um, and so I can promote it ahead of time and stuff like that. So then people say, you know what? I can't wait for Monday. Here's some new joint happening. Right. And my the numbers are going to But be- now the video is going to be on point because people are going to be like, yo, what the fuck is Johnny doing now? So I'll post that up there. And now IG has some shit where you put it on IGTV. It links up to... The IG, uh, if you put it in the post, I think it's an IGT automatically now, which is a great thing they should have done a long time ago. So now I could put like a little stint, maybe a two minute clip, except for a one minute clip. But I want to tease people with you. I don't want them. I don't want to give them all the information on you. They got to go to YouTube as well. So okay. uh, by the time this comes out, my YouTube channel will be up okay. because you're going to be the first video on there, right? So wow. that's. It's gonna be bomb, and I'm not sure if I keep. I'm not sure how I look. I look decent. I got the background blurred out, as you can see. I, know, I was kind of like, damn, how did you do that? Is that a button on here? I need to start blurring lines the, out. That's there, kind is, of there is a button actually. Yeah. Oh yeah, like you ain't trying to share <laughs> the secret. Like, tell me before we started, like blur your background. I want, I want you in all your authenticity. <laughs> I want to see your organic self. So, you oh yeah, you know, I'm, I'm gonna have fun. Tell me how to do that. I haven't used Skype in like forever. Um, you know what? I, I I haven't either until I started doing the podcast with, with my first guest. I I said, hey, I know would you mind coming on? I had no way to record them. I had no idea how to record them, mm. but I booked them anyway, and I had to figure shit out. Right. <laughs> and I was like, you do 
yeah, Skype. I said, oh, you can record? Get the fuck out of here. Bet, boom, did it, and it's free. Right. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably move to a different thing. I think it's called Zoom. I use Zoom. So I'm going to I'm gonna start paying for that, um, get with Zoom, and, and use that more. I think it's a little better quality and stuff like that. So, yeah. um, you, I mean, you actually look pretty good. Like, it looks very clear. Um, nothing wrong with the connection. So, hey, I, I don't know. I didn't even think to use Skype. But, yeah, I do use Zoom for uh, my consultations and stuff like that. I've been uh, using it for a while. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, like right now it's working. I, lo- I love the fact that the blurred background is behind me. That's actually I said, that's actually my career. That's not a fake uh, background. Yeah, I know. But I thought I was thinking like maybe you did that with a camera or something. Because I, I was over here like, how do I blur my background? That's kind of dope. <laughs> what are you clicking on? You got to click on the camera. And then it gives you an option to go to blurred, and then you just hit blurred background. Wait, you gotta click on the camera in the settings. Yeah. On the camera, like you know, we um, the, you, know, you have the little microphone, the camera, and the phone. Oh, okay, yeah. You click on that, and then it's gonna give you video settings. No. If you just hover over it, try to hover over it. Just hover over the actual camera icon. Yeah. All right. We'll talk about it later. Um, <laughs> you can teach me later. I I'll teach to... you later. <laughs> yeah, you teach yeah. me later. But um, I don't want to hold you up. We've been on here for a minute. Right. But um, I want to thank you so much for your time. Man, I appreciate it. Appreciate you for having me. Like, this was this was really good to chop it up with you. Like, you're amazing. Thank you. Your, your content is super dope. Thank, um, let everyone know again. Your social media, your radio show, your merch, right? It's yours. Check okay, it out. boom. So, last time, everybody, I am Lady J Bookums. You can find me on Instagram at Lady J Bookums. So, that's L A D Y, the letter J B O O K U M S. Uh, on my Instagram, you're going to find all kinds of dope information, advice for my indie artist community. Uh, I also have courses that I sell where I teach you how to jumpstart your music career as an indie artist, how to grow your following, um, different contacts for uh, different kind of people, radio contacts, all these different things you can find on my courses. You can go to my website that's officially launching, but it is up now. Some people are finding my website and I only I didn't really put it up, but I just got orders this morning. So <laughs> you can go to my website, which is IndieArtistBlueprint.com and you can find my courses. Uh, you can tap into whatever I got going on. Um, my radio show, like I said, is airing Sundays, Wednesdays and Sundays at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. On my site, you can actually go and submit yourself for free to uh, be a part of the music review or have your music spinning on the show or you can actually go in and purchase a featured slot which is 30 minute slots so you can go to the website get all that information find everything that i'm doing definitely follow me on instagram sometimes i follow back depending on your content and you know we're just gonna go from there hey let me know if you need a special judge on your radio show um i'll be a special judge on your show if you need definitely, to definitely you can be so, on my show uh on wednesday well we'll talk about it I'm gonna get yeah yeah on. yeah yeah, yeah, we'll definitely talk about that. We can What's definitely it? get you on. Because <laughs> I'm straight forward with it. I'm like, I'll, I already I'll bring it down. know. I already <laughs> know. But you know what? My people, they don't even be getting mad. They really be taking that criticism like all the way loud. I thought it was going to be a problem, but they really be taking it. And I think it's just, you know, I outline stuff in the beginning like, look, this is what we're not going to do. Right. This is how we're going to get that feedback. So yeah. uh, I think you would, you would be awesome. So if you, you want to get on there, we can set you up ASAP. Let's do it. Let's do it. We'll talk offline about everything. I mean, my, especially my IG. We got to right. get that shit together. Oh, yeah. You gotta get your IG. Come on now. Come on now. Got to get you together now. <laughs> Absolutely. Giant Nomad presents Lady J. Bookums. Thank you, love. See you soon.